Coming to you live from downtown Detroit, this is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep with your host, Joel Conan. This is a volatile puppy here, isn't it? And Dennis Dick. I've been the penny. I will buy the stock for a penny. With everything you need to start your trading day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this Tuesday edition of Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. Spencer Israel, Joel Conan, Dennis Dick with you this morning. Well, that was an interesting first day of the year, so we'll talk about that, try to digest what happened yesterday, figure out what that means going forward. Got a couple of headlines on our radar. Uh, the New York Stock Exchange in a pretty surprising reversal is not delisting a few Chinese telecom stocks. We'll talk about that. We will talk about health insurance stocks today on the news, the heels of the headline that uh, the the Jamie Dimon, Warren Buffett, and uh, uh, Jeff Bezos healthcare venture is is not a thing anymore. So uh, we'll talk health insurance stocks on that headline. Got a couple of ratings on our radar. Got a couple of earnings coming later in the week that could be of note. So we'll mention those as well. Our guest today is Kenny Glick. He is from Hit the Bid dot com one of our favorite guests as always uh want to remind you all to hit that like button and joel uh what's going on here overnight uh we're bouncing around here like a ping pong ball this morning up and down and all around triple d is canceling re-entering orders uh no clear direction just about unchanged on the session sorry share your screen real fast uh just after the uh the big move yesterday uh no relevant levels to come up with this morning that uh, are real close. I'll just give you the pre-market high, 37.05, and pre-market low, 77.75. Uh, you have crude bouncing back after yesterday's loss. That's up 78 cents at 48.40. Uh, gold up $6.10. It's 1952.70. And silver, that's up 23 cents at 27.59 and a half. And Bitcoin. It likes the 30,000 handle, folks. Uh, it's up $470 at $32,020. Triple D, everyone is looking for a reason why the market sold off yesterday. We gave and them the reason I, last I have them, week. Yeah, I, exactly. We gave it last week. And, you know, everybody, oh, they're on. Oh, I don't know why it sold off. Maybe it was an economic data point. It's <laughs> logic. It's logic. Look what sold off the most. The 2020 leaders. Tesla's its own animal, so you cannot look at Tesla. It just does its own thing. It also had news yesterday on deliveries. So, But if you just look at what was selling off, it was the 2020 leaders once again. And the reason for that is everybody who was sitting on those gains didn't want to pay. They don't want to pay the tax. So if, you, if you're looking at it, and I was sitting on big gains too. Now, as a Canadian, I'm in a different situation because I can go on the 30th. Uh, because we're on settle date, but U.S. is on trade date. So if you're looking at it from that perspective, you're probably going to sit. And if you can wait a couple days to lock in those gains, you're going to do it. So we see this every single year, yet the media will come in. We see this every year, that the leaders become the laggards and the laggards become the leaders. I call it the January effect. People say, well, the January effect is supposed to be bullish for stocks. It's supposed to be bullish for the laggards. Like, and I, I put a spit on everything. My January effect is once the first of the year starts for the first week, leaders become laggards and laggards become leaders. I'm not saying that's gonna trend's gonna hold through the entire year. I'm saying the tax implications cause people who were sitting on these big gains to say, now I can lock in these gains. And there was some nervousness in, in these stocks ahead of that as well. And that's why you saw some of the best stocks, some of the ones that were up the most, getting hit the most yesterday. And and, and that's to be expected. So we talked about it last week. It's why I was nervous. It's why I was a little bit skeptical, skeptical yesterday morning of the rally. Um, and I did use that rally to sell some of my stocks as well. So um, am I going to be buying the dip here? Probably eventually. But I don't want to be the hero and just jump in on day like the second morning. And I, I mean, the other thing, too, and we go back and forth on this. Um, the you know the, the tax rate could be effectively be higher in the United States uh, for 2021. But if you're sitting on those excess that, gains and you're getting the inch, you know, let's say you, you know you reaped a hundred thousand dollars, you know, harvested. Well, I don't know 
what kind of return, risk-free return you're going to get on that unless you put it into Bitcoin. Uh, but, uh, you know, there, there's balances. And I, I, I was in the same situation with you. I didn't, I didn't sell anything yesterday. Uh, but when you, everyone's in the chat, you know, what are the top five stocks to buy? What are you buying? What are you buying? What are you buying? And it was like I, nothing. There, there was nothing out there, nothing, you know, a little bit more of a pullback, maybe look at some things, but uh, no, today's going to be an interesting day to see uh, see what kind of follow through. We're really choppy here, Dennis. I mean, we are, we're really trying to find yeah. our home here. Well, we were up again last night because the buy the dip just can't, they can't help themselves. So now those people are like, oh, why is it not going up? I don't get it. Why is it not going up? Well, it needs to cool off for a couple of days. Did you notice what was going up yesterday? Again, going back to my leaders to laggards, laggards to leaders. Did you know what was going up? Walgreens went up yesterday. WBA, dog of dogs. You know what? The dog of them all, the dog of all dogs, Gilead. GILD had a great day yesterday. It was up two bucks at one point in time. Gilead doesn't do that. But money that had sold those stocks maybe coming back in. And that's a January effect as well. So seasonality matters. And I mean, you can look. And you can say, oh, no, it was, you know, the economic data points or it was the COVID. It was, you know, the, 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 the mutation. We didn't care about the mutation last week, but we care about the mutation this morning. Give me a break. Media doesn't want to write about, you know, seasonality because it's not sexy. They want to buy, oh, there's an African strain and it's more dangerous than everything else. And that's why we sold off really hard yesterday. And you can believe whatever you want, but my PL got paid me for predicting that, hey, we're probably going to have a little bit of weakness the first week of January. I said it, I had to say it five times in the show, the last week of December, that I'm nervous going into the first week of January. So um, anyway, so here we are. What do you do now? So I think you have your shopping list and you look at the stocks you want and there will be buying opportunities again. Some of these SPACs that get back down to 10 bucks and they're at those levels, you know, I could get interested in a few of those um, if they come back down. Some of them just got overdone. Even some of them without deals were getting overdone. Uh, but, you know, there's this pick, pick, your, pick your stocks. Have your shopping list. Don't go all in and just try to be a hero and say, oh, it has to come back. Because the market doesn't have to do anything. Just, you know, be cautious. But at the same time, if you're all cash, this, you know, when you get pullbacks like this, is, it is an opportunity. Would I buy more Amazon down at 3100 I'm probably not going to because it's a huge part of my portfolio. But if I didn't have any Amazon, I'd probably look at a stock like that or even Apple. We were talking about Apple. Nice pullback in Apple yesterday, like looking at the mega caps. And oh, but mega caps are boring. You only make 2% a day. When the yeah, you going. don't want that. I yeah, mean, but you yeah. don't lose 20% like you do or 40% in these QSs. You know, like it's it's oh. a double edged sword. I mean, and maybe we should go to some of these, uh, you know, these EV SPACs because QuantumScape, $125 a week ago. It's 45 bucks. When they burst the bubble, they burst it, man. And they bursted it in this one. Same thing with the Fubo. Um, you know, and it's bouncing back a little bit. I don't know if there's analyst action or whatever it is this morning. But, I mean, these things, when they burst, holy mackerel, do they burst. I mean, I, I, like I was thinking about this last night. And I was looking at these charts and looking at some of these movements and stuff. And I'm like, I'm also, almost at the point where... I think it's like almost impossible to talk about them. I mean, this this probably I know Mitch and and uh, uh, Chris do a good job on their show, but I mean, I, I just I feel like I would have been telling you to sell that thing all the way on the way up oh, yeah. and then bind it all the way on the way you know on the way down. I mean, I I you they're know it's, uh, yeah they're I mean these it's just wacky. I I just I'm I'm really gonna start passing on these because it's just. I mean, I can but think throw about how much out. pain is in here, Joel. Yeah, oh. like people think, "Oh, I'm going to buy us at forty-five dollars. We're going to be back at eighty next week." They don't typically do that. We have seen cases where they do that, but right now the trend is broken. The Momo guys are crushed. Anybody who bought this thing in the last two weeks is down a significant amount of money, and it's hard to get that momentum back. What we've said before is when you have these huge parabolic blow-off tops, which you obviously did, and then you have the sell-off. You wait until you get into a consolidation station and then start to show some life again. I mean, maybe we can bring back fuel cell here because FCEL didn't have quite the parabolic sell-off, but it did sell off significantly. And I know I had the bounce back day, but if you really look, you know, after the second time it came down 10, it, it consolidated there for about two weeks before it started to go again. You know, it starts to round up and that's when you can strike, you know, but just trying to be the hero and catch the falling knife on day one. Well, that didn't work in Fubo. 
That didn't work in QS, and it doesn't work typically overall. It's a hard thing to do. I tried a 40 on FUBO. I thought, well, maybe it's going to bounce off the 40, and I got stopped out and somehow only lost 15 cents. <laughs> um, so I always ask if I still have a piece. I have a very small piece. I sold more at $29 on um, what would have been Thursday, the Thursday before going in, because I was worried about January effect. And I'm like, you know, there could be people still sitting on gains with this, although that thing sold off so much that there's not as many people sitting on gains. Um, but I, again, I have, now I'm at a point where it's so small, such a small position, it's almost just to watch it. So yeah. I sold the majority of my stock on the way up way too early. I didn't sell any at 60. You know, I was selling at 26, 30, and I think I sold some in the higher 30s, and I didn't get any out at 50 or 60. I just got nuts when I had the small piece. But I was spooked. I was like, this ain't going to last. Uh, but, you know, you didn't know how long it was going to go for. And, it, and obviously, you know, they had the analyst. There was no snapback. It was just straight down, 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 down for seven straight days. So it's a different story. But when you're chasing, you can't be chasing stocks, you know, when they go from 30 to 60. You don't strike then. You strike when they're in consolidation station and then start coming up. So obviously, you know, I always sell too soon. I decided to hold a little bit of that one. It was a mistake. So maybe that's going to probably teach me a bad lesson. I'm going to end up selling my next one too soon. But yeah, FPBO, I mean, it's so hard to broken. Be right. it's, it's, so, broken. it's so hard to be right in these things. And uh, and uh, Gary Francis, he, you know, it makes you know, does it make sense to spend so much time on these stocks that are blowing up? They're all very speculative. Yeah, so I think that's I what people I, want to talk about. Yeah, I think, don't want to. Why do you think we got sixteen hundred? You know, we keep going up. <laughs> you know, live viewers because we're talking about this crap. This stuff that just goes really, really, you know, people want to make 20% a day. They don't want base hits. And we try to bring it back. We try, that's cool that <laughs> you can show those tweets. We try to bring it back. The, my bread and butter is boring. You guys know that. My mom making my money on Fubo. Yeah, it's nice to, you know, make 100% on something in, you know, a couple weeks. But this isn't making, this is my bread and butter. My bread and butter is base hits predicting stupid stuff like the January effect, seasonality, and then getting, you know, on the right side of that trade. That's where my bread and butter is, a little inefficiency trading. We've talked about that. People think that's boring, though. So we have to bring this stuff into the show okay. as well because there's a lot of people that want to hear this stuff. Now, okay. again, I like bringing it back to the boring stuff. I like trading Apple and Amazon because they're predictable because I'm not going to lose 40% of my money in one day unless the whole market crashes on an Amazon or Apple. So it's just they're, they're safer stocks. So that's why, you know, the majority of my portfolio, 90% of my long term portfolio is an Amazon, Apple, the Qs. You know, I'm a spy. I have boring stuff in my long term portfolio. When we're talking about the Fubos. It's that 10% of play money that I'm playing around with. You know, if I buy Fubo, I'm buying it with like 1% of my portfolio money, maybe less, you know, like, and sometimes more if I really feel good about it. But for the most part, you know, my long-term stuff is sitting in safer stuff because I don't want to see, you know, I'm not coming in here and trying to, you know, hit it out of the park. Oh, I made 300% of my long-term portfolio. I'm not a long-term trader. I'm a long-term investor. My long-term invest portfolio is going to perform very closely to what the market does. Now, my trading portfolio is absolutely different. And, you know, and I come in, you know, in, in my trading portfolio and I do different things. I'm doing arbitrage. I'm doing a lot of different things. So trading and investing are two completely different animals, in my opinion. All right. Let's, uh, let's move on to some real stocks then. Boy, uh, I want to add one thing to that. Here's how I would put it, and this is probably true. I don't know if this is true for, for Joel. Uh, I think it may be true for Dennis's long-term investing portfolio. It's certainly true for myself um, in that I could say 10 to 20% of my portfolio accounts for 80% of my attention, right? The, the, the amount of money uh, – I have and the amount of uh, attention I paid it is inversely related, right? So 80% of my portfolio is stuff I don't even think about. It's like broad-based index funds, stuff I don't I don't even think about that stuff. Yeah. It's that it's that 10 to 15 to 20 percent that that's what I think about, right? It's the small, it's the small stuff that gets most of my attention. And that's that that makes up such a small slice of my portfolio. Uh, and that's where that's where I, you know, actively buy and sell things and and trying to do some some trades and that sort of thing and some shorter term things, but the vast majority, eighty percent, eighty five percent, I don't even think about that stuff, right? That's not that's Me not either. that's not an autopilot, but yeah. the, but the, the that small slice, that's where the fun is, right? So that's it. I think that's what it's about, you know. And some of this is fun. Now, again, I, the trading is 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 a different vehicle, and I mean, sure. so the, I'm in a unique situation because I'm not just an investor. I don't have a day job, so my day job is day trading. 
So my day trading portfolio is all over the place. I'm in Tesla all the time in my day trading portfolio. I probably trade Tesla almost every single day. That's probably, if I look back, it's probably almost every day. But day trading and investing are two completely different animals. Like people are, you know, doing this on the side and they got day jobs and they're putting all, you know, half of their, or, you know, they're putting 20% of their money into a stock like QS or Fubo. And that's what I'm trying to warn against is that these are day trading stocks. These are, you know, maybe swing trading stocks as well. But, you know, is, is QS the long term investment? The stock goes from 10 to 100. Now you think it's going to 1,000? Most of them probably aren't going to do that. You know, a stock goes from 20 to 100 in a week and a half is an incredible move. You don't see this stuff. So you've got to be cautious, you know, just blindly chasing nuts. And I mean, we were talking, and this might be a good segue into ARK Investment because, you know, Kathy Wood has just had an unbelievable, you know, couple of years here, especially, you know, off of Tesla, especially. Uh, but, you know, there's people who are just blindly trading all of their trades because you can get their trades every single day. They say what they bought, what they've sold. And, they're, and every stock that she buys goes up significantly the next day. And it's going up, you know, it's not going up the next day. It's going up like immediately as soon as they disclose that. And we're seeing it, you know, this morning in skills, SKL Zebra. It's trading up 10% this morning because Kathy Wood put 0.068%, I think it is. So less than one-tenth of a percent of, of, in, of skills into one of their ETFs. And the stock is up 10% because of that. I mean, this has just gone silly town now. And, you know, great for Kathy Wood. I mean, she just buys a little position, discloses it, and the stock goes up 10%. So she's basically up 10% before she even does anything. Because once she discloses it, it's going to go up. But, I mean, that's good for Kathy Wood. Is it good for the person who's just chasing up 10% all the time? That might work sometimes in an uptake. But, you know, these moves, I mean, how much alpha are you giving up, Spencer, when, you know, you're, you're blindly chasing somebody that's, oh, they're beating the market. They know what they're doing. And you're going to jump in, you know, on every single one of their trades, you know, and this is a small trade. It's not like it's, you know, it might change your mind tomorrow and sell it. What are you going to do? So, I mean, and the skills. And then the other one is KTOS, full disclosure. I'm sure KTOS because it just got absolutely stupid last night. It went all the way to $30 here, Joel. And this is another Kathy Wood pick. I mean, this is just l lunacy. Well, she that can't. stock she, is going up 10 to 15% because she's buying 40,000 shares. I mean, because it's less than a tenth of a percent of her por portfolio. You know, like if you're looking at the portfolio as a whole, you're talking like for every $1,000, she's got 10 bucks in KTOS, and they're going to ride the stock 15% last night on that. It's gone silly town. She's not going to turn around and sell it. She can't because if people realize that, then they're not going to, they're going to stop chasing her, right? They so. actively trade. This is right. not Warren Buffett. Arc Investment is actively trading these portfolios. There was 15 trades last night. They were actively trading these portfolios. I understand so that. they're not all in or all out. But I mean, this is just the power of Kathy Wood. So you have to respect her power. Because if you're not respecting and you're not looking at it, like, why is KTOS? What's the news? What's the headline? The headline is that Kathy Wood put 0.06%. Not 6%, not 0.6%. 0.06% into one of their ETFs and the stock rallies up to $30 last night on that. It's crazy. All right. We, uh, we certainly covered <laughs> that. Um, no, I, I, triple D. I mean, that's, I mean, I think about these stocks all the time and I, I, I know you're doing a lot of, you know, you're much more active in the swinging it. And, um, you know, we'll talk about them. I just think when, like when people ask about them in the chat and I was talking about this, like ticker time, you know, give like give us some more information. They're like, where is support in something? You know, do I know like your long QS at ninety and you're hoping to add more? Well, I would say that's you know that's that's a bad idea. Um, so just you know, let us know or you're short. I know retail traders don't short that much, but you know, when you give us these tickers, we love doing this kind of stuff. But give us a little bit more information because. You know, it's different, you know, because I'm always, you know, I try to look at things from both sides of the market. But anyways. Just one more point before we sure. leave, Kathy Wood. And obviously you can sure. buy some of these funds. Maybe you should give the fund names here, Spencer. I think there's like five of them out there, like ARK Innovation, ETF, ARKK. Um, there's ARKT. Yeah. Look, so I, I wanted to buy. Or ARK, uh, I'm sorry. I, it's not I wanted to buy her, her stuff for a while. And I, I put it off because I was afraid of heights. Right. And eventually what happened is in, I think in April maybe end of March, early April, I just said, screw it. And I closed my eyes 
and I just bought and I bought Which the to buy? I, I bought the ARKW. I just closed ARKW. my eyes. I just closed my eyes. Well, obviously, I looked and to see which one I wanted to own because <laughs> I, I think I the I didn't buy the ARKK because I think that one had a lot of biotech and I, okay. I, really, I decided if I wanted to own biotech, I would just own the IBB, which I do. Um, so uh, you know, obviously, we'll look at the funds, uh, but she's got here. Let me let me pull the list of right here because, um, like you said, she's like the hottest manager on the street right now. Um, yeah. And so okay, so she got ARKW, which is like a pretty like broad based um she's got the uh are the arkf which is fintech the arkk they've got a genomic uh revolution that's, that's uh, arkg that's, A-R-K-G. Right? that's where the one bill santiago liked right and then there is there's one more that's an autonomous um what's the symbol on it um I don't know. There's like uh, fire K R. Well, the, the, the other thing too that yeah. makes this so so is confusing she, too is she she sell now sells something, but just because it got to be too much part of her portfolio. Well, exactly. you know, right? yeah, they're not so, just doing that, show. They're buying and selling. They're trading. No, I know, too. but like she, but she does that asset, like that. Some of that Tesla's she sold. It wasn't because she was bearish Tesla. That's she's selling thing. Tesla every day. I've been yeah. watching these trades and, and and there is sales on Tesla going and maybe it's just because you're right, it just keeps going up and it's taking over the portfolio too much. That's exactly but there's why. definitely a bias of selling Tesla. Well, that's exactly why. The, yeah. that's, it's just taking me. over. Yeah. You have to do that. I mean, in your own portfolio. I mean, Jason Rasnick hasn't been doing it. It's 30% of his portfolio here now, which is a really good thing for Jason Rasnick. But at a certain point in time, Tesla starts going down and be like, oh, why didn't I take some profits? I mean, that's what you know. She's rebalancing. You know, you have to rebalance because she's not owning a Tesla fund. She's owning, you know, obviously an ETF that's supposed to be diversified. So yeah. you have to continue to do that. Uh, but the one thing I was going to say is maybe you do buy some of these Arc funds. You know, if you want to play Kathy Wood instead of trying to buy and follow our individual picks and paying up ten percent because you're not getting these stocks, you know, like skills, you're not getting at the price that Kathy bought it at. You're paying up nine percent more than Kathy. So how much alpha are you giving up? You know, like I'd almost say, you know, these are a fade, you know, like when they're just, you know, going to pop nine, 10 percent and nine, 10 percent, nine percent, 10 percent, because, uh, you know, it's it's a little bit irrational to think because Kathy would bought that little bit that this stock's the company's worth that much more because of that. Now, she continues to buy it, it continues to move. And that's maybe what people are speculating. But, you know, just going back, maybe, you know, if, if she's going to have that kind of power and influence, it's probably just, good yeah. to be an investor in her funds, because every time she buys a stock. She's already up eight to ten percent in it because the market's going to give her that love. I mean, if it's a small one, the big ones aren't moving like that. But if it's a small one and she picks something, you know, like skills, for instance, and obviously it's come down a little bit from where it was last night. But this thing was twenty and a half. I mean, this is you know, it's just a huge twenty one and a half. Dennis. It got to twenty one and a half. So yeah. obviously, and you see the blind people chasing, and you can see, okay, oh yeah, but it's up seven percent. You, you got to watch how far you're going to chase this thing. Because the person that buys a 21 and a half, especially on yesterday's tape, where they were spanking all the SPACs, and here's one that just snapped backs and goes right back to the highs, basically, almost of the move, because Kathy Wood put 0.006% of her portfolio in. That's irrational to be chasing it up that much. And, you know, that's the opportunity as a trader where you can fade Kathy Wood. And it's not her. You're not fading her. You're fading the irrational move. Because, you know, if you're buying an 1820 like Kathy was doing yesterday, it's good. 21 and a half is like, is it still good that I'm paying up 20% more because I'm going to be in the same stock that Kathy Wood is? It's tough. So well, I, think also, better, but- I think it'd be better to buy the ARC funds and then you get that premium because she's always going to get that little bit of extra oomph. It's the same thing with Warren Buffett. It's the same thing was with Carl Icahn. They buy a stock, then they talk about it. It goes 5%. So they're basically up 5% before they even do anything. So it's nice to have that edge. I mean, that's, you know, the Kathy Wood power. Well, I just, one final thing. If, you know, if you're quick and you're good at this and this is how you're making your bread and butter and you're scooping it up at 18 and a half, 19, 19 and a half, 20 or whatever, and you're flipping it out at 21, you have no intention of taking this thing home, then go, go oh, ahead yeah. and do it. it. But like, if you buy this thing at 21, and then you, you know, and then you're thinking, oh, you see it printed 21 and a half, and you're like, oh, I'm just going to keep a thousand shares. I don't know. You can, you, know, you, you wake up and, you know, if you like starting down, you know, 1500 bones, then, you know, 
then go ahead. But um, it's interesting. I think Raz put in there that he did line up an interview with her uh, to do uh, privately. That's what he does with the good ones. So, um, cool. yeah, he's going to get get that interview. But she's the info. She's the hottest thing right now. So anything that she touches, and I mean, she's not managed. They got a lot of managers on these funds, Spencer. That's something to consider too. Kathy, what isn't touching all of these? Um, you know, there is a lot of fund managers in there, but the arc name. The ARC name is enough to push these stocks to these crazy moves. Skills up 20%, like because you bought points zero. It sounds crazy, crazy. But I mean, people are paying up for it. And you're right, Joel. If you can trade these things and get in these trades, you know, but I mean, they're moving and they're thin after hours. And the algo, don't kid yourself. The algos are on these things too, because I was looking at some of these ARCs and sometimes I try to get down and dirty in a few of them too. There's algos that are already written, Kathy Wood algos that rip, yeah, ri that, that's that, that rip them on. Like, look at the initial move. I mean, you know, last right night on skills. That's when the that's when the email comes out. It says this is what we bought today, and they're like skills. That's a new yep. one. Boom. Buy it up. Buy it up to twenty. Money. Buy it up to twenty. Are selling to you at twenty-one. That's yep. what the algos are doing. They're selling you at twenty and a half. They're selling to you at twenty-one. They were buying at 1850 and 1870 and 19. If you think you're beating, you know, the, the best algorithmic traders that are trading off of that news, you know, from your retail they account, just switch the key. Pretty tough. Oh, pretty buy tough. up to 20, sell anything from 2095 to 2115. Boom, hit a button. Rasnick uh, making a good point, too. He says, Kathy Wood moves stocks more than Jim Cramer. Completely agree, Raz. That Jim Cramer is not moving stuff. Uh, on some of these SPACs, he was last week, but for the majority, like on a stock like Skills, she's got more power right now, I feel like, than anybody. So, I mean, it's important for us to have this conversation. We don't give Kathy a lot of love. And, you know, we always give Buffett an icon, and you've got to give Kathy the love here now, too, because you know what? She's moving stocks. And if you're just blindly trading a stock and not paying attention, you could get run over in something like this. You know, the algos, though, are the ones that are making that money off of those, you know, trade reports. Because that thing, when that comes out at, what, 630 or whenever it came out, I mean, that skills, you can see it right there. Boom, it's gone. A quick question, chat. Uh, Joel, was yesterday just a way to kill everyone's stop? Seemed to happen every time. I, I don't I don't think so. I think it was just more of a, a complacent market. And I felt myself that way too, you know, after the initial sell-off. I'm like, okay, well, we had the rally overnight. You know, a lot of times we'll pull back off the open and then just sit or, you know, just chop around. And you had that, that initial sell-off. And I think every, you know, maybe you hit some stops in there and stuff, but the people were conditioned. That okay, yeah, you know, this just buy the dip, and then they just never gave you a chance afterwards. So I'm sure there were some stops up there, but I just think it was more of a a complacent market, and you had people out there selling that wanted to sell last week, but they were waiting until yesterday. So we'll see what kind of follow through we get in today's session. S and P's are leaking. We are heading towards the low of the pre market session. That's at seventy seven seventy five. So, uh. Not not a strong pre-market like we've had in the last few days. You've got to use the logic, though, and say, okay, where, you know, Jeremy Newsom does this great. We have Jeremy, and somebody asked, we got to get Jeremy on more, and we will. We love Jeremy Newsom. But what he does is he looks at the technicals and he figures, where is everybody caught? Where is the pain? You know, he's always looking at it. And think about how many people are caught from yesterday. Think about how many people in the overall market were like, oh, you know, we got a little bit of a dip. I'm going to buy it. It'll be up and they today. It, it will be up today. Well, no, but it doesn't do that. It usually nails it. You and he's being sarcastic, but you know, it usually has a little more pain in there to shake those people out because I know you read your Twitter account and you think everybody's just killing it. And you know what? In an uptape, a lot of people are making money. It's not a lie, but you know, overall in the markets, you know, there's a lot of people that lose money and they just don't hear from them. There's crickets from those people. So, I mean, people get caught up in these things. And so people are caught from yesterday. That's why it's hard to just snap back and let's get back to the highs because you got other people and a lot of these Momo names that are caught. And, you know, you can get sustained moves in one direction. So you've got to look. I like to wait until we stop going down. Again, I talk about the two-day move. Can we snap back today? We probably can. But I'm not coming in being a hero and trying to say, okay, well, this is the bottom. Could you use yesterday's low as a level? You could try it. You could try a trade on anything, 364.82. I mean, if you get down there on SPY, maybe it bounce the first time. We're still 25 handles above that low, and we did have buying towards the end of the day. So maybe there will be the buy the dippers that come in on that level. But use a level. Don't just blindly say, oh, it has to come back, and I'll just buy here because I know we're going to be up in a month. I mean, that doesn't necessarily have to happen.
Let's all go. Right. All right, let's, all right. Let, let's move on to some other headlines here. We got Kenny Glick on in a couple of minutes. Let's talk about these Chinese telecoms here. There's three: CHA, CHU, and CHL. Uh, all were going to be delisted. That's what the uh, the parent company of New York Stock Exchange said. We are delisting these companies at the behest of the Trump administration. That's what they said four days ago, or I guess five days ago now. And last night they said, "Wait, never mind." We're actually not going to delist these, these these companies. So CHU, CHA, CHL, a uh, bit of a 180 there. So any fund manager that that sold uh, these these stocks, thinking that they were going to get kicked out of an index or whatever, is going to have to now buy them back and whatever. So a bit of a reversal there. They all popped on that headline. CHL, uh, yeah. I mean, pff, the trade's done. I mean, it's, you know, boom, it's back. I'm sure the algos were able to make some money off of it. But, I mean, you're coming in here and buying it now. I mean, it's been going down. Now you get the snapback three-point rally in CHL up 10%. I don't like buying the rips. I like buying the dips. So, I don't know. I'm not coming in here and saying, okay, yeah, we're coming back. You know, and the CHL is going to go right back to $34. And it's going to be, you know, it's got a nice 7% dividend. But, I, you know, I think the easy money was obviously just made. Oh, and probably made by the algos on this, you know, headline. All right, let's move on then. What about these health insurance stocks? If um, if 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 Warren Buffett, if if the combo of Warren Buffett, Jeff Bezos, and Jamie Dimon announcing a healthcare venture can hit stocks like Walgreens and Cigna and CVS down four and five percent when they announce a venture in 2018, when they announce that the venture is no more, is that now worth five a five percent pop in Cigna and CVS and Walgreens and Anthem? I don't know. They never seem to get back what they lose when on these kind of things. Always. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good point too. Um, I mean, I I think the pandemic kind of changed their minds a little bit, uh, going into this venture. So good move on that part. Um, you know, these stocks, you know, Walgreens had a had a good day yesterday. You got all kinds of support at 39. I'm, seasonality well, helped it too. Yeah, seasonality. seasonality I don't know. Help. I mean, do you want to get excited about these stocks this year? I, I I don't know. I mean, they I mean the CVS has always looked like it's had a little bit better of a chart, but I don't know, Dennis. I know you 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 don't love these I, stocks. I, I haven't liked CVS or Walgreens for a long time, and that's because of Amazon and you know Walmart. I mean, obviously, and I, I just don't see the need for that many standalone pharmacies. And that's why I'm like, I look at this and I think, is this the kind of growth area that I want to be in? CVS. I mean, first people like this, you know, just getting their drugs delivered to them. Amazon is coming into this arena. I just don't see, you know, this like story that's going to carry CVS to $100 in 2021. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm going to, you know, not be making the money. And obviously this has been a bad story for a long time. You think about how good the market's been since 2015, $110 with CVS in 2015. It's 70 bucks now. It's deserved. I mean, this is not a growth business. This is a business that, you know, has a nice little dividend and, you know, we do get bounce backs. It's a tradable stock. Is it investable here? I don't think so because I think Amazon is still coming to eat their lunch. Yeah, and it's moving up towards, I mean, it's, you know, monthly range. I mean, if you want to be a range trader in this one, I mean, you're not quite at the top of the range, but it seems like, you know, once you're starting to get into the 70 handle, it gets a little bit rough. But getting a little bounce off this, um, not surprising that they uh, – they pulled. I mean, who wanted? Who would want to start a healthcare venture in this? You know, in this kind of you know pandemic atmosphere. All right, waiting on Kenny Glick. He will be joining us in a moment. Here, I see him in. Let's the, go, Micron. The, it's yeah. It's one of yeah. the only stocks that are going to report this week. It's going to report on Thursday. It's a very light earnings week. Um, you get somebody that's got some guts here ahead of the report. Yeah, I always like when we get a call ahead of earnings report. That's what yeah. we're, getting, we're getting this morning on Micron. Yeah, uh, this is from Citigroup. They're upgrading Micron to buy, and they're raising their price target from thirty-five to a hundred. So a bit, a bit of a catch up there. I, I've I've missed this entire trade, and I was in Micron a lot, and I've been in Micron a lot, but I really didn't see this last move from sixty to seventy-seven. It's a stock that just never seems to get the love it's a cash cow makes money valuation has always been cheap this has always been cheap but for whatever reason 
I guess when they started, you know, that they were moving into some of the value names back in November, this one just kept running and running. So now if you're coming in, it's like, oh, you know, yeah, the valuation's cheap. They're probably going to blow the earnings away because that's what Micron does. Um, but it's run a long ways now, too. So there's a lot of good news priced in here. So can it get the run up ahead of the report? You know how I love that trade. I love the alpha extracted from owning stocks ahead of the report. I don't like to own them through it. For this, unless it's a long-term investment, for the simple reason is that it's still a coin flip. Because even if you think they're going to beat, is it all priced in? You know, is it one of those situations where you get a FedEx and it's like, oh yeah, they blow it away, but oh, this is as good as it gets, and we're going to pull the rug out from under it? I mean, that's what Micron always seems to do. So I would be sell- if I had this on for a trade, I'd be selling it before Thursday, Thursday night. Uh, if you're, you know, just I'm just going to drill down on the daily analysis here. And it had a, you know, it was having a really good day uh, early in the session, kind of all the way up to 78.61. And then it kind of got treated with the rest of the market. So you're looking, just treated over 77. So, you know, if you're going to get all excited about this and you think we're going to take out the 78.61, uh, keep an eye on 77. What's that pre market high? Um, I don't know. It just kind of feels, I have you no, know, like anybody that like, got caught on this yesterday and now they're getting this upgrade ahead of the report. I don't know. I, I we'll see. It could blast right up to 7861, but I think you see after that red bar yesterday, the p- report coming up in 2 days, maybe not going red or something, but some people getting their money back after trying to buy the dip after the big rip. All right, before I bring in our next guest, I want to say that we've got a little over 2,000 viewers right now and just under 250 likes. That's like 12, what's that, 12 and a half percent, somewhere in that range. If we can get up to 500 likes today, that would make I like me you. a very happy person. Joel, now, have you ever liked the show? No. You've never liked the show before. I bet you right. Kenny's liked their show before. Kenny Glick, he's here with there us he now. Is. He's got hitthebid.com. He's our VWAP guy. He's the VWAP guy. Kenny, good morning. Hey, what's up, man? Just throw me right in there. I didn't even know what was going on. How are you? Yeah, yeah that's how guys. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. Where's this bug? Oh, there he is. Hey, Kenny, how you doing? All right, my man. How are you, my man? Uh, we're doing well. Doing well. So we had Kenny on at the end of the year, last year. I meant 2019. And I didn't, I didn't review the tape. Because oh, you didn't? no, because he um I know what he said. Uh, yeah, I remember well, yeah. all Kenny's calls. He's long AMD, yeah, which is a killer. He's been long Q's since eternity, so that's yes. gotta be a good one there. Tesla. It, well, I don't know if he was in Tesla or not, but I know it's AMD. I remember Kenny seeing you out in New York like four years ago, and AMD was thirteen dollars, and you were just on the AMD train, man. You're like the AMD <laughs> rock star. I'll tell you that. And I probably made some money in AMD because of you, Kenny. Because I tell you, every time I think about you know AMD and I'm, I've had it in my portfolio for a while, and I think about selling, I think, what's Kenny Click doing? So I'm going to ask you right now. It's been a great call in AMD. It's been a ridiculous run for it. Are you still in AMD? Are you still trading it at all? Or it's just too sky high for you now? No, I've been, yeah. I, once that, I think it was that day where it got into the 50s and got hammered on an earnings report. And that was, that was it for me, you know. But I've been all about liquidity the last couple of months. I mean, I missed a, a beautiful run on some of these crazy names, but I've been going back to the, the 1999 style of trading, just, you know, join in on what the frenzy is for the day and then move on because a lot of times these stocks are getting hammered the next day. And, you know, I know you guys were talking about the SPACs. I was in on all those stocks where no one even heard about us. Yeah, we had, you on, we had you on the end of the year show when you were talking about VTIQ. That yeah, was April, that's... right, Spencer? Yeah. Even, you... even before that, it was, it was, it was Space and DraftKings. Yeah. And I didn't even realize those were SPACs. And then somebody brought <laughs> VTIQ to me and explained how this is going to be the biggest thing in 2020. I never knew what a SPAC was. I want to credit my man, 8 right now, because he told me that this was going to be the craze of 2020. And it's wow. great because this whole business, like we're doing right here, is surrounding yourself with smart people, people that know what they're talking about, and you know, getting a little bit of knowledge from everybody that you know and making it your own. And that's what, you know, that's what I've been doing my whole life. So it really worked out well. How Let's get that eight ball on the show. Yeah, how do we I, out of curiosity, how do you get that, how do you get that nickname? I wonder. Because uh, he's so smart and he can see the future. <laughs> he's really good at pool. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, not where I was going with that. All right. So Kenny, what's up? What's on your radar these days? You, you mentioned names that, you know, you're getting into this, the, the, the stock du jour and, and getting out before they get killed. G- give us some examples. Well, lately it's been this BTBT, which is hilarious. BTBT, uh, another, I mean, you're not going to believe some of the names that I've been looking at. Some of these were penny stocks that have actually become real stocks. Some of the shroom stocks, you know, I like the weed. So um, the next transition <laughs> was logically hallucinogenics. We've been trading something <laughs> called uh, MMEDF, uh, which was insanity. Um, something, uh, there was another one, WNW, which was insane. And then, of course, did you guys see the GLSI? They cured cancer, but then they didn't cure cancer. And then it's like every day there was these one of these therapeutic oh, or, or cancer stocks they would rally, rally, rally. You'd get halted on the upside a couple of times, which I'd be out. Once the halts start, I kind of dip out of these things because I don't want to be halted on the downside. Yeah, and the no, once they get halted on the downside, you know, sometimes they open up and they're down 50%. So it's fun to play with them, but you got to know what you're doing. And if you have a decent platform, it gives you a little bit of a warning before that halt's gonna about to come. And usually I'm getting the hell out of these things because I don't want to be involved in the halt. But so many names... And every day there's a, there's another one. Today we're looking at uh, you know P E C K. We're looking at A L R N. I don't even know what these things are. This is 1999. I wake up every day and I'm into something else that I knew nothing about the day before. And Talk about PAC because here's a stock up 70. percent How do you come into something like this? Like it's six bucks. Probably you didn't know about it yesterday. You just said so. How are you trading it? You know after it's up 70. percent What's the stock symbol? P E C K. Yeah, and another thing about 1999. If it, if the symbol is good, we're in. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a good symbol. It must you know make great birthday. symbol. If the name is it it makes us laugh. So something like this, if it's under five and it starts to get through the fives, we look for that stock to go to 750. If you get through 750, you're generally looking for 10. And once you get into that 10 realm, that's when you start getting. You start to accelerate on a lot of these, and you look for 1250. So as you, you cannot trade these names without taking at least a two and a half point risk. And think about what you're doing. You're trading a $10 stock with a two and a half point risk on a day. That's absurd in itself, but that's the game. So if you get through the 10s, we start looking for 1250. And especially if there's options, that's when you start looking at those next strike prices. So it's all momentum and you just try to get out before, before that rollover happens. And then if they're shortable, oh man, I mean, you could, you could short them on the way down, but a lot of these stocks are, are hard to buy. Yeah. So is this a- one you're in right now, or this is something you're No, this, these are the ones I'm looking at right now. You're I'm looking going to short some of the ones I was in yesterday, like BTBT. This was 38 cents, my friends, and it went to $33. Oh, I haven't awesome. seen something like this probably in 20, 20 something years. So absolutely amazing. And this one was shortable. Uh, we were in uh, Bingo Bongo Boingo for the last couple of days, B-N-G-O. Hilarious. Why not? I mean, that's a bingo. Let's buy it. You know, it didn't It didn't matter. This thing got through 250. We were loving it. Got to five. Bang. Got almost to 750. Got a little hurt yesterday buying it up at seven when it didn't get to 750. And then you take your beating on the way down. But, you, you know, all you're doing is giving back some of the profits and, you know, Thank God I didn't hold it overnight. Yeah, Never I'm going to add one thing because, because, and that's a good point. Kenny's sort of contradicting what we spent in the first 10 minutes or more of our show <laughs> talking about. But, but here's the key difference. The, the, the key thing that Kenny's doing is he's controlling his risk. So Kenny, yeah. talk about, and you kind of just said that at the end there, we said you don't hold this stuff overnight, but talk about how you control your risk in these things. I'm always selling into the move. So again, I'm not taking big positions anymore. I'm a little player nowadays. I'm just having some fun with my crew. So if I'm in a couple of thousand shares and this thing starts to move, I'm selling it in 200 share increments. So by the time it's gone parabolic, I'm usually in a couple of hundred shares just laughing. I'm like, wow, too bad I didn't hold the whole lot. And then I put a stop at those levels. So when it does get, starts to rip down, you know, I'm getting punched out. So yeah, take a look at Peck. So this thing's in between the 10 and and the 11. Right now, the only way we're out of this stock would be 10, but you're looking for it to get to 1250. And if it gets to 1250, you've got to start thinking, I guess we're going to 15. And this is truly the most reminiscent of 1999 trading I've ever been a witness to 
since those days. And again, this is why I become bearish because this is the type of market that I saw. And we have the craziness craze. Yeah, you got to have a craze. That's the SPAC craze. You've got to have the most delusional penny stocks, worthless companies ripping hundreds of percent. Now we finally have a little uptick in volatility. That usually spells trouble for the overall market. Now, trouble, what does that mean? Maybe a 10% correction finally. Ooh, where does that take us? Back to where we were three weeks ago? The market's gone straight up for nine yeah. months. Yeah. So Kenny, how did you, how did you, I mean, I know you had the AMD and the triple Qs long and I, I did speak to you a lot during the meltdown. Um, how did you handle that? How did you handle it with your pocketbook? And I know you were pretty down one day or for a few days and stuff. And I think it's important to talk, you know, not only about the winners and the great things, but, you know, to talk about how you handle, you know, drawdowns and, you know, letting the market get a, get ahead of you psychologically. You mean in March? Yeah. Well, like I said, I, I'm a lot of times I'm not in positions. So, this is the, the wild west for me. Those days where I'm getting depressed and angry and, 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 and pissed off is usually when I sell out of a stock and they go up 40% or 50% right after I get out, like the NEOs and the Jumamas. Remember those NIO and JMIA? I was in those things in the single digits. And when they got into the 12s and 15s, I'm thinking, look at me, I'm, I'm great. And then they go to 40 or 50. That's the frustration I got to deal with. Because I'm very nimble when it comes to losses. I, I really have no tolerance. You get out right away. Day trader, that's where my day trader comes out. So if I have something that's violating a level, I'm just punching out. I'll take my quick loss. Just like yesterday on Bongo, that thing broke seven bucks. I'm loaded up thinking 750. And when it got to 725, you know, I top ticked it like a champ, baby. <laughs> but when it rolled back over, I was like, all right, this one could get ugly. I got to take this loss. I'm out at seven, no oh. plan on holding it overnight. Look where it is now, five and change. So that's how I deal with it. I avoid it, I avoid it. And I'm, I'm just very nimble right now and I'm loving where I am because I, again, let me be the one that says 2021 is gonna be down. I don't think, has anybody come on the show and say 2021 is gonna be a down year? I'll be the one. Down 8% across the board. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> No, no Kenny. No, we. So I love we, a down year. I, yeah, I think we need I, it. Why not? Year. It's been too easy, man. It, right. It's been too easy. Wait, hang on. We're gonna get peck peck to twelve fifty while we're right here. Yeah. You gotta look I wonder why. Here. I don't know. They sell pecks. What's no, a it's peck? Bird I don't know. Got a peck, bird I got a peck. You got a peck over there. Got to be bird seed. Hey, yeah. uh, hey, Penny. But talk about how you use VWAP because that's that's a key part of your strategy. So how do you use that to help you find trends? Are there upside or downside? Great question. Awesome. On Sunday night, um, obviously, you know, Brian Shannon. Brian Shannon and Zach Hurwitz, they showed me this multiple time frame VWAP. And what I have found is that intraday, you're looking at the one minute and usually the prior day VWAP. I call it the one minute and the multi day. But when you have a bigger move, you start looking at those multiple time frames. So, yes, on Sunday night, the ENQ futures, which is basically all I look at, QQQ and the ENQ futures. They pulled back to the five-day VWAP and bounced off it to the penny and then rallied. So all I'm sitting there is like, okay, that is a huge, massive, significant level. And we were joking around. I'm like, you might have seen the lows for 2021 already. And if those don't hold, then we'll go short. So yesterday when the queues rolled over, which was very surprising, we generally don't go down on the opening day of a new year, especially in a bullish environment. So when we did... That's where you got to check what you believe. Like it's, it's, you come into this market with a self perceived notion. It's hard for you to overcome that idea, then realize, oh my God, this market is actually going down. So, yesterday, when we broke those levels, that takes the emotion out of the game. All right, we're breaking the five day. You know, this is a short, short the cues. And we had that move. By the way, here we go. Heck, about to hit 12. Just looking for 50 cents more. <laughs> but, uh, Kenny, uh, Kenny, before we let you go. No, uh, you can't let me go. We're staying here forever. Uh, Hold me. He's here. He's here. Hold can me. You, it's bear. It's bearish time. I'm scared. Could you, could you give me all your nicknames? I know you have the Abraham of asset assets, the, the Baruch of, of bonds. The Barack of bread. I'm the Cain of cash. I'm the David of ducats. I'm the Elijah of earnings. I'm the Frank of funds. I'm the guilt 
the Glick of Gelt. I'm the Harry of something else. I don't know. I'm a, I got a lot of nicknames. Yeah, but now right. I go by the Warlock because I got some magic powers that I still have. I'm unable to be able to harness these powers, but I'm, I'm learning as I go. Yes. I got a question for you. How, you know, and, and how much are you biased to the long side versus the short side? Just talk about, because there's people who, you know, think nobody makes money short in stocks. And I know oh. you make some money short in stocks. That's all I'm doing. I it's love all these shorting. There I'm you go. shorting everything in sight except these crazy small cap stocks. But I will short those too when the time comes. I am looking to short everything. I'm short. I want to short these electric car companies. I want to short these e-retailers, this Jumama. I want to short everything except you want to hear my pick of the day? BTU. Oh my God. Yeah, that BTU. I body energy. from going short US Steel all year, picked that right off the bottom. That whole energy sector was coming over a two-year VWAP. I was in U.S. Steel, Alcoa, APA, Halliburton, KMI, Cliff, U.S. Steel, BTU, Rig, and Schlumberger all at once because the whole sector was ripping. <laughs> yeah. BTU was the lagger of them all. BTU, yeah. I don't know why this thing would go up, but that's what this market's all about. Stop asking why. Look at the chart. There's, gonna, there's a squeeze going on here. I'll tell you why. BTU. This is the January effect. This is seasonality. And we've been talking about coming into there. Leaders become laggards. Laggards become leaders often in the first week of January. And sure. yesterday was textbook where all those leaders became the laggards. And you got a stock like BTU. I didn't even notice this one. I guarantee you this was probably a 2020 laggard, though. If we look at the chart, sure oh. it was. It was a big time laggard. Yeah. So oh, you have oh, a relief oh. rally. You have people who maybe are, you know, that, you know, are real realized loss at the end of the year. And you often see this happen. So this is another textbook example of January effect at play here. So huge day for it yesterday. I wish I would have noticed this one yesterday because uh, this is a textbook example of seasonality. Absolutely. And look at that chart. I mean, this thing has a, it's like a reverse split. Is uh, You don't know what's going to happen. I've seen this stock. This is like the dry ships moment where dry ships every once in a while, every couple of years, you would have this explosion. So BTU is the one I have on my radar because I'm, I'm, I've had some fun with the whole list of those. You know, we had GEVO. I don't know if you know that one. Uh, that was exciting for a while. Uh, it, that was just, that came out of nowhere. Like it's like an ATI type company. So a lot of those oil and energy plays, you had the halo effect. The next thing you know, everything's ripping. But BTU was kind of just sitting there like, hey, what about me? Remember me? And then off topic question. Like, off yeah. topic question before I let you go. Yeah. Are the Jets going to take Harbaugh off our hands? <laughs> you could have them. I, I want <laughs> no, the Jets you could have them. I want the Jets to be exactly what they are forever because I've been I'm a gambler since the fifth grade. I worked for I was a bookie used to live next door to me. I've always been a gambler. <laughs> and I used to do football sheets in the fifth grade, bring it up to school. I've been betting against the Jets since the fifth grade, and I never lose. So I mean, <laughs> you never lose. Right you never lose. They are the worst franchise, I think, in sports. I know you Detroit guys. Uh, Lions. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Lions. One one playoff victory. So uh, I mean, the Jets are life. just pathetic. No matter what they do, that's why. Who cares? Trevor Lyon. Trevor Lawrence. He'll come to the team and he'll he'll break a leg. It doesn't matter. The Jets are <laughs> cursed. But you know what? They make money every every year. You bet against them every game. That's a great skill. I really wanted to bet against Michigan this year, and it was uh, – and I said it, and I didn't have the heart to do it. But maybe next year. All right, Kenny, thank you. Got you thank on. You guys. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. I'll see you guys Thursday night, right? I'm coming on. I'm going to come on. I'm coming That's on. Right. Wait, this guy, yeah, right. we'll, we'll nail them together. We're both nine o'clock. I'm sleeping by nine. Wait, to, wait, I usually to, am. Yeah, I got the last kid. I usually am in bed at nine. Wait, tell us, <laughs> tell us about Thursday. What we can, where we can watch. Oh, Thursday nights. Uh, if you guys want to come, what we do is we 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 crunch some numbers. Usually, it's bigger. It's bigger during earnings season. We plan our attack for options Fridays. So Thursday nights, we take a look at who reported. By the way, Peck about to hit twelve fifty. What's up? Yeah. Uh, so Thursday nights, it started out with just a crew of us, 25, 30 of us, just hanging out, getting you know, having some drinks. Where else are we gonna go? During the pandemic, we got about 400, 500 people showing up now on Thursday nights just to talk about options. We have some drinks, crunch some charts. Uh, if you want to join, just Google me or uh, just hit me up on the warlock at hitthebid.com. By the way, Peck, $13. Thank you very much. 
This is at 13. Oh, the warlock man. at hitthebid.com. I will send you a link and an invite. Come and hang out. We have uh, we play Grateful Dead show between six and eight. I have a DJ come on at eight to nine. So we get funky with some. Uh, he's he's like a rock and roll funk DJ, and then we have a ceremonial toast at nine, and then we we basically go to about three hours just crunching charts and drinking. So it's a it's a hoot. All right, if you thought. Kenny gave some good value. Smash that like button. Kenny, thanks a lot. Always Thank a pleasure. Guys. Happy New Year. Just pack out eleven. It's now thirteen seventy, so it's pretty good. Oh <laughs> dear lord! Holy Although I, I will say that it, it looked like the stock was running before we brought Kenny on the show. Oh like, yeah. It, oh yeah. So. It was already up one hundred and seventy-five percent. Robin had grabbed a hold of it. Yeah. This stuff all ends ugly. But remember, when you're trading this kind of stuff. The way Kenny plays it, he plays with tight stops. It gets through 12 and a half. Okay, I'll stop myself out just below that. And I'm going to see if I can get to 15, and then I'll raise it up, and I'll raise it up. And then you know what? When it gets through it, and if there's a little bit of slippage, there's a little bit of slippage, but he gets the hell out. And the problem is the majority of traders will not sell at a loss. Newer traders say, oh, it's going to come back eventually. And that's how they get them stuff uh, caught in a stock like QS from $100 down to 47 yep. I've never, so I'm going to give you a crazy, you know, stat or, or not a stat, but I will tell you, I, I you know in the long-term portfolio, yes, I've had some crap, but I mean, in my day trading portfolio, when I'm, I, I don't think I've ever lost, you know, I, like more than 50%. I don't think that's ever happened to me. I, I make, you know, thousands of trades a month. I don't know if that's ever happened to me where I've lost like, boom, it would have to happen overnight. Whereas a stock, you know, like I had something overnight and it just, you know, had bad news and gapped down 50%. I don't remember that happening. Wait, though. so you're saying losing losing half your position in, in one trade? I don't That's think it's saying. ever happened in my day trading account. I mean, in my long-term investing account, sure. You know, I've, I've got some dogs in there and some stuff. But in my day trading account where I actively trade, where I make most of my trades, I can't remember ever losing 50% on something. Ever. Ever. And I made, I probably made a million physical, maybe more, you know, over a million physical trades. I don't know if that's ever happened. And may, maybe it has, and I just don't remember it. But I remember, like, I was short Celgene and it got taken over and that sucked. And I lost, like, 30% on that. Uh, but, I mean, that can happen overnight. You know, news happens and hits you. I don't remember being in a stock and then it losing 50% on it. So you can control the rest. Don't kid yourself. You're just choosing not to. You know, if you're disciplined, you know, you're saying, well, I, I, I was in QS at 100 and, you know, I was going to stop myself out at 95, but then it opened at 80. You know, well, I can't sell at that. So, you know, that's way through my stop. And this is what we hear all the time. I mean, we hear stories like this and I'm like, you still got to eat it. I mean, I was short selling trying to make, you know, just an arbitrage trade probably against, you know, like, um, you know, maybe the biotech index and it got bloody taken over. What did I do? I covered it. I covered it as soon as I could. I covered it like probably a minute or two after the news hit the tape because I'm like, I'm in trouble. I'm on the wrong side of this. So you've got to, in this game, you've got to be able to take losers because you know what? Not every year is going to be like 2020 or where everything just seems to go up. You're going to have these years where it could potentially be 2000 and, you know, March 2000 and maybe the stuff isn't going to come back and you could see people blow out their accounts because of that. So you've got to be disciplined enough to admit when you're wrong and take those losers. That's why Kenny can trade this stuff because he's disciplined enough to take his losses. Yeah, I've totally lost track of time here. It's 48.59. That was great, though, Kenny. It gives you a different perspective. Yeah, for sure. And that's the, it's all about controlling your risk. And that's why Kenny can do uh, what everything. he does. Everything. That's why Kenny can do what he does. Uh, and the other side of that is, do you miss out on some 10-baggers? Sure. Sure. You don't right? have to, though. You don't have to. You don't have to be cutting at all. You can just move those stops up. And I'm sure Kenny has some huge gains. So you don't have to. You can keep moving it up. But when the stocks start moving against you, you got to get out. You have to get out because if you don't, you know, these stocks will dominate your portfolio because I don't care how much of a wizard you are. And you say, I went on everything. Eventually, you will be in a stock that isn't going to come back. Eventually, you will pick the one stock that actually goes bankrupt or the one stock that actually does go to zero. It will happen. You know, like, you know, talking about, you know, our, our, our friend Al there, you know, and I won't give the last name, but, you know, our friend Al, Joel, you tell that story all the time on Lucent Technologies. And he's like, you bought it at 30 and he's our 60. And where is it going to go? And then it was 30. He's like, well, it's not going to go to zero. Well, it did. It wasn't Lucent. It was Nortel. It was Nortel in Canada. I mean, th this was the number one Canadian. This wasn't like just some penny stock Nortel. It was 27% of the Canadian index and it went to zero. There were some people that just got absolutely murdered because they believed that Nortel would eventually come back. Got to $120 and went to zero. 
So this can happen. So you just have to be disciplined enough to take losses because 2020 has spoiled everyone, especially if you're a long side trader. Um, you've realized that, hey, if I hold on long enough, my stocks will come back. They will come back. And you know, Joel, that that isn't always the case. This isn't the market we're always in. They, you might get in that stock and maybe 90% of the time they do come back. But that time that they don't, it's going to be a really painful trade. Uh, Joel, you have to unmute yourself because you muted yourself. So I can't unmute you. There we go. That's okay. Uh, okay. Let's wrap things up here. And yep. uh, we're leaking. We're leaking here going into the 930 open. It's predictable follow through from last night. I mean, this is just the two day move, which we talk about all the time. I play that all the time. You get this huge flush, then you'll snap back overnight by the dippers coming in. They flush them again. Now, a lot of times you see this thing start to turn around around 10 a.m. We've talked about this trade a million times. So if you're looking, 9.45, 10, maybe we get a big flush. Maybe Amazon loses another 50 bucks or something crazy, 60 bucks. And then maybe you come in a little bit. You find a level, you're like, okay, I can see the turn now. I have the low of the day. I've got a little turning point. Maybe it's cutting back up you know, through you know, a level that you liked before. I mean, that's how you control the rest. But just trying to catch the falling knife, good way to get yourself cut up pretty good. Uh, all right. Um, sorry we didn't get to more tickers. We I've written a few of them down. I always go through the chat after the show and write down. What's the Fubo news? news? Um, does Where Fubo need does Fubo need it, news? Uh, it looks, it's trading on news. I mean, it's been it, going it, straight it, down. Yeah. Somebody said something. Was there an analyst or somebody that gave it some love? Obviously, something happened because the stock is you know up three dollars and forty five cents here. So it's getting uh, a little bit of love here. Finally, it's like the first relief pop we've seen in this thing. It's it got upgraded. It looks like. Yep, right. an upgrade. Uh, oh, they gave some guidance. Oh, they gave uh, guidance. So yeah, yeah, yeah. They gave Sorry. a few revenue guidance, a ninety-four to ninety-eight billion dollar range. They expect paid subscribers uh, at the end of the year. I guess that means the end of last year to exceed five hundred and forty-five thousand. Again, that's paid subscribers as of the end of twenty twenty. So, um, yeah, look at that. Well, that's that's true. You can tell the difference. I mean, as soon as you look at a tape, you can say, oh, that's trading. And then when it's really going nuts and you can't even follow the bids and the offers, that's news. So yeah. for the most part. So, I mean, you're seeing a nice snapback. I would say on this is, you know, this is so much pain on this. You know, when does Rich, you know, Greenfield get on this thing and start banging the drum on the short side again? You know, maybe he does. It's a hard stock to just, you know, all of a sudden say, yeah, it's going back to 40. Um, I will probably sell the rest of my stock into strength here today. So it's been, you know, I shouldn't have held any of it, obviously. I held that little piece. I sold some on a little bit more on the Thursday. I'll probably use this pop to sell the rest of it. So maybe eventually it does go back to 40, 50, 60. I think there's still a story here. Maybe you just hold. Maybe if you bought it yesterday and you were good enough, you know, maybe use that level as you're out. But have an out on this thing, 2317. I mean, it's 15% up from above that, but it's been a stock that I was absolutely wrong on to start thinking that it would, you know, route and bounce at 40 or 35. It's, you know, the, the, the pressure on it has just been incredible. All right. Let's see if we can get to a thousand likes today. That would be fantastic. Hit that like button on YouTube. It takes like second of your day and then I won't bug you about it uh, after you do it. So 670. Is that a record? Uh, no, but we're getting up there. I think How we're many have we there. had? Have we ever got to a thousand? I don't actually know what our record is for likes. Have we ever got know. to a thousand likes? We're at 694. It'd be so. cool to hit a thousand. 726. We're not that far. Stay on for five minutes. What does that do? It helps us with the mysterious it makes us YouTube feel better algorithm. about ourselves, Joel. No, no, no. In all seriousness, <laughs> in, in all seriousness, it makes uh, our show easier to find on YouTube. It will, it will make our show show up in other people's like recommended lists and stuff. So, people who are watching other shows will see our show and they're like, "Oh, let me check these guys out." So that's how that works. Uh, thanks to our guest, as always, Kenny Glick. For those of you uh, listening on our podcast, please remember that all the information from our show is meant to be used as informational purposes, not for investing or trading advice. Uh, yeah, that's a wrap for us. Catch uh, the replay on YouTube or catch us on any major podcast platform. You can always email us premarket at benzinga.com. Everyone have a good rest of your day. We'll cover more tickers at the 340 show. I promise we don't always get to it during this hour, but uh, we'll cover more uh, in the afternoon. Everyone have a good rest of your day and good luck in your trades. <laughs>